Buying an RV is a big financial decision. They're expensive and it doesn't matter if you're paying $5,000 or $500,000. You wanna make sure you're getting the best price when you buy it and you also wanna know what it's gonna be worth later. Is it gonna drop in value? Like you can talk to some guy in a forum, right? Or maybe you heard from somebody at a bar they got 30% off their purchase price. But how do you really know? Well. I created a methodology for myself where I could analyze the numbers on different rigs and find out how much wiggle room you really have when you buy something new in the negotiation, how different models actually hold their value based on the specific model, not on rumors, and also what a good price is when you go to sell it. And today, I'm going to share all of that with you. So next time you make a buying decision on an RV, you don't take it in the short. Hey everybody, it's Robin with Creativity RV, and like I said, today I'm going to give you a couple of tips, some tricks, and a tool that I developed to actually analyze the numbers on any RV purchase or sale that you're going to make. Now, you can watch just part of that and you can kind of get the idea, or if you really want to get into the numbers, watch through to the end because I'm actually going to show you where I get the data and then what I do with the numbers so I can tell how much wiggle room I have when I buy a vehicle in the negotiation process and also how you can compare a couple of vehicles to see which one retains its value better. Just on a side note, I wanted to let you know that this information is also going to be put into the third quarter updates in my book, Be a Nomad, Change Your Life. For those of you that are familiar with that book or have that book, you know it's a living book. So every quarter I go in and actually update all the links and I also put any new information that I think people can use when they're ready to go full time on the road. Okay, now let's actually get to the numbers so you guys can make the most money and save the most money when you buy or sell an RV. So right now I'm going to pop into my computer and record my screen so that I can show you guys exactly where you can get these numbers and what you can do with them. The first tool I'm going to show you is an NADA guide. Now, most of us are familiar with Kelly Blue Book, right, because of cars, and that shows us the value of used cars as we go along. NADA guides does something similar, but it also does it for RVs, and this is what the dealerships use um, to get their pricing and also they can get another special guide that I'll tell you about that gives them wholesale pricing but for us this is totally free and I have a blog post written about all of this with, which has all these links including this one but I'm going to show you guys really quick how it works and then I'm going to show you another tool and then I'm going to give you some tips on how to use this okay so let's go down here we'll choose one of these let's say um, travel trailer then you choose a manufacturer. Let's go ahead and say Airstream. Okay. And you can see all of the different models are in here. Let's go ahead and just choose this first one here. This is the base camp. And you have to put in a zip code. Now, if you put in different zip codes, because we're nomads, you might get different pricing, but they do this because pricing changes by geography. And a very cool thing about NADA guides is that they collect data from 1.5 million different sources, dealers, listings, actual sales info by geography so you can get a really good approximate price. So hit continue. It shows you a picture of the rig, which is cool. Some notes about it now. When you get to this page, you know, it's really tempting if you're selling to put in what the miles are, if it's a motorhome, or your solar, stuff like that. I would say don't do that because the dealers don't look at that, and mileage doesn't really affect the price of motorhomes if you compare it. So all of my data for myself personally is based off the base pricing. That's what they do, so that's what I'm going to do. So you get base pricing, and you're going to see that they have a suggested list price, low retail, and average retail. Now, remember, this is a 2019. So the suggested list price is actually the MSRP that the manufacturer suggested the dealer put on the sticker price. That is their opening price, so 36.9. Now, that's not what anybody really pays normally, right? So according to NADA guide, 
in 2019, now that they have some data for this year, most of these went for 32.3. So there's not as much wiggle room, you guys probably know, on Airstreams as some other models, which is why this is so important. Because a lot of us think that we can take any RV and take 30% off the initial MSRP price, and that's a good offer. Sometimes it is, but sometimes it isn't. And this is how you find out. So most people paid 32. Some people were good enough to get it down about 30%, which is 26,000. So this might be your range if you're gonna make an offer on this. But if you wanna go the extra mile and you wanna know what the dealer actually paid, now remember, this is what the manufacturer suggested, they charge, but this isn't what they paid. Then you can pop over to another website called thedealercost.com. The link for this is also in the blog post. This is actually gonna tell you if you go up to the recreational vehicles, what the MSRP was and what the dealer actually paid for their invoice. Okay, so I've gone down here and I see the base camp. This is actually a 2020. You can go back in their archives and get the 2019 if you want to. But just to show you as an example, you can see the similar model in 2020 selling for 37.4. The dealer paid the manufacturer 25,793 for that. Does that mean you should go in and offer 25? No, because the invoice cost doesn't include any of their overhead expenses, storage fees, freight charges, anything like that. So they're never going to take this. They want to cover their expenses and make a profit. But now you know that this is the range that you're working in, okay? So let's head back over to the NADA guide. So there are a couple of tools, right? Maybe you knew about them, maybe you didn't, but NADA guides and seed dealer costs are two good websites to start getting your numbers down. Well, that helps you when you're going to be negotiating for a new sale. But let's say you were deciding between two RVs. Like for example, when I went on the road, I did this between two like 25 foot RVs and I wanted to see which one held its value better and one held its value way better than the other one. It was more expensive, but I determined in the end, if I kept it for a while, I would actually lose less money on the more expensive model because it retained its value better. And this is the kind of thing you can figure out when you analyze the numbers. So right now I'm going to take you with me while I go into a spreadsheet that I created and I'm gonna show you how you can track the info from NADA guides year after year. Put that info into this really simple spreadsheet, you guys. You don't have to be a, a mathematician, I'm not. You just have to get an idea of the numbers year after year. It's really easy. It takes about 10 minutes. I have three different examples on rigs I'm going to show you. And then I'm going to tell you how you can get this spreadsheet that I made as an example and also give you one that I created for you guys that you can fill in yourselves. So let's go back over to RVs and let's choose a motorhome. And... Let's go ahead and choose, let's see, let's choose a, choose a born free. Now, you'll see right here, you can see all of the born frees, but you can see a year. Now, you can see that they stopped making them in 2016, so that's the most recent one we'll get, okay? So let's go ahead and do a jewel, because it's the one on the top, easiest to see. Put in the zip code, get the base pricing, now, you can see that in 2016, this is important, in 2016, as a new unit, according to the NADA definitions, 135 was the MSRP. But today, if you were gonna buy a 2016 and 2019, you could probably get it for somewhere between 70,000 and 84,000. So this is great, right? If you're buying a used one and you want to make sure you make a good offer or you're selling one and you want to make sure that you take the right offer. But if you want to see how the unit you have now or another unit that you're thinking about getting will depreciate over the years compared to another one because they could be totally different. I determined a way to do that and I'm going to share it with you right now. Okay, everybody, this is my blog, and if you go down to the latest blog post, which I just published, you're going to see this article. Just pop into it, and you're going to see, if you go down through the article, a link to a free tool 
that I made for you guys. You just hit here. It will take you to this spreadsheet now. This does two things. It gives you an idea of the wiggle room of negotiation, like I said, if you're buying a new rig, and it illustrates how the value of that rig will reduce over time. So I have three examples in here. I have a Winnebago view, I have an Airstream pull behind trailer, and I have a Newmar Dutch Star Class A. I chose three really different rigs so I could show you how they all work using this method. Okay, so I got this data from the NADA guide. So all you're going to fill in here is the suggested list price, the average retail in thousands, and then it calculates for you. If you go up to this link right here at the top, after you get this sheet, it will take you to an empty spreadsheet with these calculations in it so that you can do this for any rig that you're looking at. But let me give you an idea of what you can find if you do this. So for example, on this Winnebago, this is a standard Class C. There's a ton of them out there. In 2019, they were listed for 137, but the average person paid 105. That means there was 23% in wiggle room in negotiation. Most people were able to take 32,000 off that initial MSRP price. So you can see that in here, and you can also see as it got older how much the price dropped that people paid for it, right? But one of the interesting things I found about this one was that there was a big price increase in this Winnebago. So in 2015, you can see here, it was 109 on the MSRP originally, then it went to 110, but then it jumped to 138 and 148, and then they dropped it back down because you can see over here, people weren't paying that. They got a little ahead of their skis there. And what's important about this, let's say you were gonna buy a Winnebago view. You looked at a new one on the lot and you saw they were 137 and you think, you know, I'll just get one three or four years older and you see somebody has it listed for 90, let's say, and you think that's a pretty good deal. Well, that person may have paid 78. So it's good to go back and look at what people paid for it new. This is one of the things that you can do using this kind of analysis. Now let's look at the next one. The next one is an Airstream trailer. Now, people think that Airstream actually holds its value the best. I wanted to see if that was true. So you can see here that for this 23 foot trailer, the newest list price is 75. Most people sit paid 62. So on average, there was only 17% of wiggle room in the brand new negotiated price. But you can see that they really did hold their value better than other models. In fact, in the first two years, they virtually didn't drop at all, which is great. And another good thing you can see from this is that Airstream has not been raising their prices significantly year over year. It went from 66, 69, 71, and so on. And then finally, on the Dutch Star. Now this is a pricier rig. Right now, the MSRP for the base unit is 424. But you can see over here, most people were able to get that down about 20% which is $83,000, so no joke. And these did hold their value in the beginning, but what I thought was really interesting about this one is that once it got to be about five years old, the value tanked. Now, if I had to guess, I would think this might be because people that have this kind of a budget don't keep the rigs that long. Maybe they trade up every three or four years, and so there's more on the market around five years where they go for about 241000 but if you had 241000 are you going to buy one that's five years old? I don't know. You might. But these are the important things that you can learn from this spreadsheet. And like I said, all you have to do is hit this link, and you'll be taken over to a blank spreadsheet where you can fill in your own stuff and get your own values. This is a way to analyze the numbers that I worked out for myself now. You know, it's hard to really track depreciation on RVs. Some people do it by type of class, you know, but it's very, very subjective because the numbers are variable. You might be a great negotiator. There might be, you know, supply and demand issues that change the pricing on different models. So this is the only way that I found that gives me a consistent read on the numbers that can tell me how I can negotiate what the unit will sell for and how it holds its value. I hope this helped you guys. If it did, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends if you think they can use it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I hope to see you all out on the road someday. Until I do, everybody have happy travels out there and be free.